Hi, I'm Azara Tagaya and you're watching Ringgit Sense Plus, powered by Ringgit Plus. This week, we take a look at the topic of financial health or credit worthiness, or in other words, your credit score. We want to find out how exactly it affects each consumer, especially when it comes to your future loans. But before that, let's talk a bit about e-hailing. Now, if you use ride-sharing services like Grab, you might have a hard time getting a driver to pick you up after July 12th. This is because the government has set a few additional requirements that drivers are required to meet. Here's what we know so far. Firstly, they have to undergo a medical checkup. Also, for cars that are more than three years old, they need to undergo a PUSPACOM inspection. They also need to undergo a six-hour training. And lastly, they also need to get additional e-hailing insurance for their car. Now, all this has to be fulfilled before they can get their e-hailing permit. Now, do you think this sounds like a lot of additional hassle? Well, apparently, so do a lot of Grab drivers. We met with the president of the Grab Drivers Association to hear what they have to say about the new requirements. Pelbagai proses ini yang sebenarnya perlu mengambil masa. Tapi cabaran kita tu itulah dengan kekangan masa dan kebanyakan pemandu yang melakukan pekerjaan ini secara separuh masa. So mereka terpaksa mencari masa dan peluang untuk melaksanakan perkara-perkara ini. Uh, dengan syarat-syarat yang daripada pihak syarikat sendiri pun dah khususnya kalau kita rujuk kepada pihak Grab jadi pihak Grab mengadakan satu SOP yang sangat ketat kepada driver-driver jadi setiap pemandu perlu mematuhi SOP yang telah ditetapkan dengan penambahan lagi penguasa undang-undang ni uh, secara tidak langsung ia membebankan lah pemandu-pemandu uh, dan juga kita uh, dapat juga uh, feedback yang mereka tidak bersetuju sebenarnya tapi apa kan daya inilah uh, apa permintaan ataupun saranan daripada kerajaan untuk meluluskan akta e-hailing ni bagi kesemua pemandu Grab yang ada di Malaysia Arif says that many part-time drivers will not continue driving because the estimated additional cost is about 1000 ringgit this is beyond what they will make driving part-time we visited a driving school in the Klang Valley that offers the Public Service Vehicle License course. According to Mat Aris Bakar, the Managing Director of Metro Driving Academy, the requirements to attend the course are that candidates must be above 21 years old at the time of application and they must undergo a full medical checkup. Currently, there is an estimated 300,000 Grab drivers in Malaysia, but he estimates that about 100,000 drivers do not meet the age qualifications as they are university students who are under 21. So, what do they learn in these six hours of training? This is the training manual used. It covers how to use navigation apps, laws, courtesy and personal grooming. Cara dia mengendalikan peniman, uh, penumpang yang okey, orang kurang upaya ni. Uh, jadi dia kena bantulah. Uh, jadi uh, dan juga didedahkan mengenai undang-undang, mengenai peraturan, ya, dasar kerajaan mengenai industri ni. Uh, sebab uh, bagi saya sebagai uh, pusat latihan yang melatih mereka, mereka bernasib baik sebab ada negara yang tak terima perkhidmatan ini. Negara kerajaan kita dia terima. Jadi patut kita hargai dia dan kita seriuslah untuk memahami apa yang kerajaan nak dedahkan pada mereka. Dan garis pandan pemandangan selamat tu paling penting. Sistem app tu dah baik dah. Tetapi ada dua komponen lagi. Dia ada tiga komponen. Pemandu, kenderaan dan sistem itu. Jadi sistem tu bagus. Jadi sekarang apa yang dia lalui proses ini, dia kena berubah kepada dua lagi itu. Jadi orang itu, pemandu itu dilesen ke bawah e-hailing dan didedahkan perkara-perkara begini. Kemudian kenderaan itu juga akan diperiksa bagi memastikan dia selamat di jalan raya. Kalau dulu dia persendirian lain, bila komersial penggunaan dia tinggi. Mungkin dia pada pagi sampai ke malam dia berjalan kan. Jadi banyak perkara yang perlu diperiksa, dia pastikan selamat. At the end of it, there's an exam that tests their knowledge on what they've learned. So what is the cost of taking these classes? Well, basically it ranges from 200 to 300 ringgit.
We asked the public what they thought of these new regulations for the industry. Bagi saya benda tu terkesan sangat-sangat sebab kita orang tak semua bas pun tak sangat cepat kan. So kita orang sebagai pengguna Grab memang memerlukan benda tu sebab tak semua bas pun sampai tengah malam. So kalau kita orang ada aktiviti apa-apa ke susah untuk kita orang ulang alik sebab kita orang tak ada transport. Memang terkesan sangat-sangat. Bagi saya uh, yang pentingnya uh, Grab ni macam lesen tak perlu sampai ke tak level sama macam pemerintah teksi yang dah buat ataupun lori dan sebagainya. Dia memadai dengannya kita tahu background Grab, pemandu Grab tu siapa. Ha. Sebab sebab yang paling penting, yang kebanyakan kes berlaku sekarang, pemandu Grab kebanyakan kes jenayah dan sebagainya, kita pemandu ataupun bukan maksudnya penumpang, dia tak tahu background pemandu Grab tu. Dia tak ada identiti ataupun ada macam uh, seragam ke apa ke kan. Jadi kita macam kita orang biasa-biasa pun boleh duduk dalam kereta, dah tengok, boleh ambil orang macam tu, tengok, dah tahu ah, dia pemandu Grab. Dia, dia tak ada identiti. Macam motor AC sekarang pun ada, nanti ada baju seragam dan semua kan. Jadi kalau boleh, <coughs> biarlah ada identiti. Tak perlu sampai nak ambil sijil dan rumit-rumit sebagainya. Itu mungkin lebih membebankan pemandu Grab ni. Bagi saya, Grab, betul lah. Pemandu Grab sepatutnya kena ada lah semua tu. Lesen semua. Macam yang cik cakap tadi tu lah. Kepaluan tu pun setia ada. Baru lah adil kepada semua. Sebab sekarang ni, kalau kita tengok Grab dengan teksi sekarang ni, dia bersaing. Jadi, Arab adalah persaingan yang sihat lah antara dua tu. Jadi uh, apa yang di diwarwarkan tu sepatutnya kena buatlah kena ikutlah. Kita bukanlah tidak sahut apa saranan kerajaan untuk uh, melakukan undang-undang bukan kami menolak undang-undang itu sendiri tetapi uh, antara yang melibatkan cabaran juga adalah ialah 12 bulan Julai 2019 dengan tarikh yang terlalu hampir dengan uh, musim perayaan ya, ramai pemandu-pemandu yang akan menghadapi uh, hari raya dan sebagainya jadi mungkin tak uh, orang kata tak praktikal uh, masa yang telah diberikan kerana tarikh uh, pelaksanaan itu baru saja bermula 1 April 4 baru saja bermula dan bulan 4 5 6 7 sangat-sangat pendek sebab kita difahamkan kerajaan nak berikan masa 1 tahun tapi malangnya bukan masa 1 tahun yang diberikan cuma daripada bulan 7 sampai ada pada bulan April sampai bulan Julai saja itu pun bukan penghujung bulan Julai hanya 12 sampai bulan Julai jadi kita mengharapkanlah pihak kerajaan uh, revise bukan kita minta tu kita tak nak ikut undang-undang tetapi masa tu Grab realizes that many of their drivers face a financial constraint so they've unwielded their Berat Samadhi Pico campaign which will subsidize most of the requirements among the things that are subsidized are the medical checkup, puspakam checkup, and the PSV training. They're also in discussions with insurance companies to come up with cheaper e-hailing insurance plans for their drivers. The new regulations are supposed to raise the level of service in the e-hailing industry. However, with the standards raised so high, the fear now is that many drivers won't be able to meet it. In the end, it's the customers left hanging, waiting for a ride that never comes, as there aren't enough drivers. Now we're going for a short break. After this, we're going to be looking at e-hailing insurance and how much it will cost. In the meantime, go to our Facebook page and let us know what you think of the government's ruling for the e-hailing industry. Will it affect you? Drop your comments there and we'll see you after this. Back on Ringgit Sense Plus with me, Azaria Tagaya, still on the topic of e-hailing. One of the new additional costs that e-hailing drivers have to bear is the requirement to have e-hailing motor insurance by July 12th. So what's the difference between the motor insurance and an e-hailing motor insurance? How much will it cost? Well, we spoke to our partners at Ringgit Plus to explain how it works. According to Lucas Uy, the Director of Insurance at Ringgit Plus, there are already insurance companies that offer the e-healing insurance protection. It's an additional protection on top of your current motor insurance policy. E-healing insurance is going to be an additional rider to your comprehensive insurance policy for e-healing uh, drivers who wish to um, operate after July 12th. 
Um, this will cover the, uh, any accident that happens during a, a trip where a passenger or a driver uh, uh, gets into an accident. Uh, this will cover the car, uh, the driver, the passenger, uh, third party liability um, and um, any uh, potential medical expenses that may arise from an accident while you are on an e-hailing trip. Currently, there are full-time e-hailing drivers who buy commercial motor insurance, which is more expensive. So this will be a cheaper option. I estimate it to be a percentage between 20 to 30 percent of your base policy. Um, so example, if your current insurance policy uh, premiums is 1,000 ringgit, you'd be expecting to pay between 200 to 300 ringgit a year more for this insurance add-on. If drivers without e-hailing or commercial motor insurance picks up a customer and gets into an accident, their comprehensive motor insurance will not cover them. The reason is their policy is for private use, not commercial use, and picking up a fare is considered a commercial activity. I think the uh, ability for you to get this add-on halfway through your policy will be possible. Um, uh, I think um, it will be an annual policy, so it will start from the date of your um, uh, comprehensive policy and it will terminate at the end of that policy as well. So I think halfway through, it, it, as long as you get the add-on from the same insurance provider, I don't see why you should not be allowed to get um, the add-on halfway through your policy. With all the additional cost, many part-time e-hailing drivers are already thinking of quitting before the July 12th deadline. Now, how will this affect consumers and drivers? We asked Arif Ashraf, the president of the Grab Drivers Association, how much does it cost to be a Grab driver now and how much will the additional requirements cost? Kos yang uh, terlibat dalam ni, ia bergantung kepada kereta yang mereka gunakan ya, dari segi bayaran bulanan dan sebagainya. Uh, saya boleh uh, beri kos yang uh, perlu diadakan dalam setiap bulan itu bagi seorang pemandu mungkin sekitar RM1,000 ke RM1,500 untuk kos keseluruhan lah, bagi kereta, penyelenggaraan dan sebagainya lah, secara purata antara RM1,000 ke RM1,500. Tapi dengan uh, adanya pertambahan ini, makanya kos itu lebih lagi lah daripada kos yang sedia ada mungkin sekarang ini untuk permulaan sebagai PSV bermula saja dah memerlukan kos sebanyak uh, RM800 untuk memulakan tambahan lagi kos RM1,000 ke RM1,500 sebulan itu dah menjadi RM1,800 untuk bermula jadi inilah kos tambahan yang uh, terpaksa seorang pemandu itu keluarkan untuk memandu e-hailing we also asked Arif how much do part-time and full-time Grab drivers currently earn. Untuk masa sekarang ini, pendapatan, uh, pendapatan seorang uh, pemandu separuh masa, uh, kita boleh anggarkan di antara uh, purata uh, mungkin sekitar 2 ke 3,000 ringgit sebulan. Makala seorang uh, pemandu full-time mungkin sekitar 4,000 ke 5,000 ringgit sebulan. Itu pun bergantung kepada perkhidmatan mereka tawarkan sama ada ekonomi ataupun uh, plus ataupun premium. Jadi uh, ada segmen-segmen yang tertentu tetapi uh, kadar purata ini tertakluk kepada uh, berapa panjang masa mereka bekerja. Kita bercerita sekiranya mereka bekerja uh, masa yang panjang mereka akan cecah uh, pada atas purata lah. Kalau part time tu maknanya jika mereka kerja daripada pagi sampai petang jadi mungkin mereka bermula seawal pagi sekitar jam 4 hingga 6 pagi ataupun 4 hingga 8 pagi dan mereka masuk ke pejabat jam 9 pagi dan kemudian selepas mereka tamat bekerja pada 5 atau 6 petang mereka sambung untuk memandu sampai mungkin lewat malam 9 atau 10 sebagainya jadi uh, kadar pendapatan seorang pemandu uh, separuh masa ini mungkin sekitar 2 ke 3 ribu ringgit uh, yang ini saya, saya boleh berikan antara uh, kasar dan bersih tapi kalau seorang pemandu sepenuh masa ini ya sekitar 4 ke 5 ribu ringgit Yang ini mereka memandu uh, daripada seawal jam 6 pagi dan mungkin sehingga jam 8 atau 10 malam bergantung kepada uh, cara pemandu masing-masing lah. 
Arif says this income estimate is before the cost of petrol and maintenance of the car is taken into account. Part-time drivers will be the hardest hit as they will have less time to spend with their family as they have to work longer hours to make up the additional cost under the new requirements. We foresee many will be turning to other part-time jobs with lower entry cost requirements. That means customers might just have to wait longer to get an e-hailing ride or not having a ride turn up at all. If you're an e-hailing driver or customer, let us know how the changes will affect you. Find us on Facebook and write your comments there. Now we're going for another short break. After that, we're going to be speaking to our partners at Ringgit Plus on how your credit score affects you. Don't know what a credit score is? Well, stick around to find out. Back with us on Ringgit Sense Plus. Thanks for staying tuned. Now, in this part of the show, as always, we read out questions from our viewers who have reached out to us on our Facebook page. And to help answer your questions, joining us this week is Han Liu, CEO of Ringgit Plus. Hi, Han. Hi. Hi, thank you so much for joining us again on Ringgit Sense Plus. Now, this week we have a question from our viewer Zach uh, and his girlfriend Nora. They're 27 and they plan on getting married soon. So, Zach makes 3,500 ringgit and Nora makes 4,000 ringgit a month. So, they're planning to get married and they have heard that their credit score can actually uh, affect their chances of getting a loan, but they don't really understand what is a credit score and how it can actually affect you. Okay, no, that is a great, great question from, from Zach. Um, um, a, a credit score is very simply a, a measure of how healthy you are, mm -hmm. but not from a, a medical perspective, mm -hmm. but from a financial perspective. And, um, um, and in the name, it says credit, right? Yeah. Which means, um, you know, uh, how, how healthy you are from a financial perspective mm -hmm. um, in the context of getting credit, which is either a, a credit card, personal loan, or in Zach's case, uh, a home loan. Mm. Right and um, um, you know so it, it, the, the best way to think about it is you know it's it's, it's a medical report um, for your your financial situation right mm. and mm. Uh, in Malaysia um, um, banks don't generally use um, any specific credit score they come up with their own okay. right so what I mean by that is um, there isn't one score that is used by by every single bank uh, in Malaysia okay. it's um, uh, it's a bit like you know when you go and 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 uh, when you go and um, when you graduate with a CGPA, mm -hmm. um, that doesn't get you a job automatically, right? You still have to go for a, 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 a interview. You still have to go for a assessment, yeah. and that's exactly the same concept as a, a credit score to a bank approval process, which mm -hmm. is you get a score. It's like your CGPA, but it doesn't get you the job. So, um, in in that sense, a credit score is, is a is a good indicator of whether you might get approved. Mm -hmm. But each individual bank has a different way of assessing whether uh, or not um, you get approved for a loan. I see. So, as you said, each different bank gives you a different credit score yeah. according to their assessment. Yeah. So, how can you as a consumer actually determine or gauge what your own credit score is like? Um, um, there are several ways to do it. Obviously, there are, uh, you know, there, there are several credit rating agencies in Malaysia mm -hmm. uh, who can give a sense of, of, of what your score is, as in if they were to behave like a bank in mm -hmm. that sense, which mm -hmm. is, hey, let me assess you uh, as if a bank would assess you. So uh, companies like CITOS, uh, REM, mm -hmm. um, uh, pr uh, provide services um, a, which are regulated. Yes, uh, they provide services to give you a sense of what banks will look at mm -hmm. when they're looking at you, uh, your, your financial profile. I right? see. And, um, uh, but I mean, th those guys aside, um, you know, how, how do I, how, how would I go around measuring mm. uh, my credit health other than just going in and, and, and taking that score? I, the, the simple thing is to think about three things when mm. you are, uh, when you're thinking about whether, whether you're financially healthy or not. Mm. The first is your level of income. Yes, so obviously the higher your income is, mm -hmm. um, um, it's a huge factor in, in how healthy uh, you are. So the higher your income, um, the more likely it is to, to, to have a healthier, um, mm. you know, of credit score uh, yeah. on a bank-to-bank -bank basis. The second thing is your indebtedness, meaning how many loans do you have already, mm -hmm. right? Um, and um, you know, and what and the best way to think about it is what is your current kind of monthly installments uh, for across all your loans combined mm -hmm. versus your income. 
I see. Right? And the third thing, and, and it's very important, it's nothing to do with uh, uh, your, your income or your loan amount, is your loan repayment history. Mm. So if you've got an existing loan, whether it's a home loan or a personal loan or a, or a credit card, mm. um, um, you've got to make sure that you keep up to your repayments. Otherwise, that may negatively affect your score. Because mm. if you think about it, um, if, you're, if you're not able to, to be disciplined, either be disciplined or able to actually repay your loan, mm -hmm. that's a very bad indicator for whether you should get another loan or not. Mm, I see. Okay, so what about if uh, Zach or Nora uh, still has a student loan? Mm. Will that affect their credit score? Um, Yes, so, so a, lo a student loan is in fact a loan mm -hmm. um, and um, um, the, the thing to say about that is um, it won't affect um, uh, unilaterally across every single credit institution. So certain banks, certain credit institutions may, uh, we may take the fact that hey, most people have student loans mm -hmm. into consideration and, yeah. and weight it differently. Uh, but yes, a, a student loan ultimately is, is a loan mm -hmm. which affects your ability to, to repay back uh, uh, mm. either a bank or a credit institution or the, the student loan, uh, PTPTN, mm. um, um, you know, it affects your ability to pay back for every loan that you get. I see. So how can someone actually improve their credit score? Mm. Uh, very simply, um, you know, a credit score is, 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 is taken on a snapshot of your profile. So you can, you can change it over time. And the best way to change it is A, um, yes, increase your income, mm -hmm. uh, right? So, you know, um, uh, upskill yourself, uh, ask for salary increases, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, have a good eye on your, your, your loan amounts, uh, mm -hmm. your loan repayment amounts. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're feeling that it's a little too high, maybe just restructure your loans into a, a slightly longer term to get your, your installments back uh, down below a certain level. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the third, always pay your installments on time, okay. right? That is the single most... Uh, uh, action will the thing that anybody can do in a situation where they have income and they have uh, existing loan commitments. How to improve your credit score, mm. pay your loans on time, pay your credit card bills, at the very least, the minimum payments on time. Okay, I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Han, for sharing with us again this week. Uh, as always, we look forward to having you guys from Bring It Plus help us and also help our viewers. No, thank you. Thank you. Well, guys, that's the end of today's show. And as always, go to our Facebook page and connect with us there. You can also give us your questions on our Facebook page as well. And that's also where you can also watch all the segments from today's show, as we'll be posting them online as well later on. I'm Azara Tagaya signing off. We'll see you again next time. And as always, remember to invest and save wisely.